Welcome, everyone. Uh, as we learn now, the special segment known as For the Shabbos Table. And this is a very special one because it's uh, going to be for the Shabbos Shvuas Table, as we are right before Shvuas. And it'll be a, a shir about the amazing origins of David HaMelech, since uh, Shavuos is the yard site and also the birth of David HaMelech. That's one of the reasons why we lay in Rus. This shir is made possible by a grant from the Rubin family, who ask us to please have them in mind that they should be zeichut to a ben zacher, and that they should have a hatzach and ruchnius and in Gashmias. So we know that sometimes the Rabbeinu Shalom disguises things and camouflages events so that the Sutton shouldn't be mekatreg, shouldn't pr prosecute. And it's clear and evident from history, and as the, the Arizal explains, uh, that Dabra Melech's beginnings were camouflaged first with uh, Light's daughters thinking that the world would come to an end if they wouldn't have children, slept with their father, and from one of them was born the nation of Mayev, which of course from Mayev came the ancestors of Dovra Melech, Rusa Mayavia. Then the next step was uh, the continuation of Malchus based David was when Yehuda, uh, after his wife died, uh, thought there was a uh, woman of the night and uh, slept with Tamar, which turned out to be the mitzvah of Geula for the uh, loss of Er and Ainan. And, uh, but through this, uh, again, murky union, uh, of course, with the righteous Tamar, who was the daughter of Shane, Shane ben Nayach, uh, was born again uh, Peretz and Zarach, which from them would come Malchus based David. And the next step was uh, another unlikely rendezvous. And Naomi sends Rus into the fields of Boyaz to sleep by, by his feet. Again, this would be uh, a mitzvah of Geula for the loss of uh, uh, Rus's husband, Machlein. And uh, again, from that union, of course, came Yishai, the uh, father of Dovin Amalekh. So all this was done in order to uh, keep the Sutton away, because when the Sutton sees that things are anyway, uh, <laughs> they, they look shady, he doesn't have to put his periscope on it. And then we come to the incredible story of the birth of David HaMelech himself. I mean, first of all, we have to know that we're told that David HaMelech was supposed to be a miscarriage. And uh, Adam Arishan, seeing the future, gave, he was supposed to live a thousand years. The Torah actually hints to this when it says, and these are the years of Adam that he lived. 930 years. What do you mean? Why does the Pesach have to say that he lived? Of course it's that he lived. And the answer is, is there were more years. These are the years that he lived. Because he gave 70 of his thousand years to David HaMelech and so the the story goes and we'll start with the very very extraordinary personality of Yishai Yishai the Gemara tells us in Mesech the Shabbos was one of the four people in history that never sinned and only died only died because of the uh, sin of the snake, because otherwise uh, he, he, he would have uh, not he, he would have not uh, uh, died because he was perfect. 
He was perfect without sin. Yishai never sinned. It could be that that's why his name is a palindrome. It's read backwards and forwards the same way, Yud Shin Yud, because at the end of his life, he was exactly like the beginning. Just like beginning, he was without sin. The end of his life, it was also without sin. Now, Yisha was an incredible Torah teacher. It says that he was Yatsa Bechlusa Benichnas Bulat Bechlusa. He went out with 600,000 and he came in with 600,000. You know, I always think about Yisha when I think about the Sima Shas at MetLife Stadium, where there's approximately 100,000 people, and I think to myself, well, Yishai had six times that amount of Talmidim every day. He was the head of the Sanhedrin. So, it's taught to us in the Vayev Kyais of Nasar Mamoras, the Shei Mishmul, the al Kedamakiri Al-Tehillim, that later on in life, Yishai began to be concerned that maybe Daig HaDaimi was right. And that maybe there is a chance that all descendants of the Mo 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 Moabites are forbidden to join into Klag Yisrael. Not just a male, like we know the Halach is, Moabi Veloi Moabis. And then, since he was descended from Rus HaMoyavia, so then his children were really not legitimate to come into the kohal, to come into the congregation. So he wanted to have at least one child who would be able to marry into Klal Yisrael without any question, without any taint, without any blemish. So what did he do? It seems to be, as we will see, that he had a shifcha, a shifcha kananis, a maidservant of sterling quality, of sterling midas. And he said to her, and this is the way the Asara Mamoris learn, it's a little bit complicated. He said to her that I am going to give you a conditional emancipation. And he explained to her that in the event that the halach is correct, and that uh, Rus HaMoyavia was permitted because Ma'avi Velo Ma'avis, so he's a regular Yisrael. So then he's emancipating her, because if he doesn't emancipate her, he's not allowed to sleep with a shifcha. On the other hand, if in reality he, he, he is uh, from a uh, Moabite descent, because even a Moavia is forbidden, and is a Moabite descent, then he's not emancipating her. And he's sleeping with her as a shifcha, which he would be allowed to do. And then her son he would free, and that child would be permitted to call Yisrael regardless. And that was the plan. This shifcha was of quite incredible loyalty to her mistress, uh, Yishai's wife, Nitzeves Basadoel was her name. It's remarkable that this great woman, Eishes Chover Kechover, this great woman, people don't even know her. Uh, she told Nitzeves Basadoel about the plan, and she said she doesn't want to, you know, take her husband away. So Nitzeves Basadoel said, well, I don't know what I could do. My husband already has separated from me the last three years. And uh, it would seem to be that perhaps uh, Yishai was concerned because of Doig's opinion that really he wasn't permitted to die. So he, he, the, the uh, Shivcha said, well, listen to me, my mistress. On the night that your husband is supposed to sleep with me, prepare yourself and adorn yourself and when I blow out the candle, I'll slip out and you'll come in. And that's what happened. And on that night, Nitzavis became pregnant from her husband Yishai with David HaMelech. Nine months later, Nitzavis is found to be pregnant. 
Now, since she was, of course, a married woman, and since Yishai knew he didn't sleep with her, it looked like she committed adultery. And the child was a mamzer. And indeed, Yishai's children wanted him to be killed, and her to be killed. Probably from her asha. However, uh, Shmuel, uh, Yishai did not do that. After all, there were no witnesses, and there was no asra. But he said that David, who he was certain was a mamzer, because he didn't sleep with his wife to his knowledge, and she's a married woman, so then he would be a mamzer. David should be uh, confirmed to being a roa, to being a shepherd. And as the Redak says, he was a shepherd in a mokum sakana. And uh, Yusha expected as a mamzer, says mamzer lechai, that eventually he'll uh, lose his life in the endangered place. Of course, Hashem had other plans, and to the contrary, uh, like the Shach al says, even though he was sent into a dangerous place, but uh, to the contrary, uh, David HaMelech was afforded unusual prowess, and Gama Esarive Esadoiv Hika Avdecha. He killed lions. He killed bears. But uh, of course, Nitzeves was rejected as a woman that committed adultery. And uh, David Amelech was rejected. He ate alone. And uh, as it says in Tehillim, David Amelech testifies in Samak Tess. Tes, Muzer hayisi la'achi, I was like a stranger to my brothers. V'nachri l'bnei and I was like a guy to the children of my mother. Now the, now let's see how, what develops. 28 years, we fast forward 28 years. David HaMelech, the scorned one, living in danger, Nitzavas, the rejected wife, so now we have, we look at Shmuel Anavi. So Hashem says to Shmuel, it's time to appoint a new king. Right? Shal HaMelech was rejected because he didn't fully annihilate Amalek. So Hashem says to Shmuel, Malek Karnach HaShem and fill the anointing horn with oil. V'leich eshlachach el Yishai beis alachmi. I'm sending you to Yishai. I found in one of his sons the future king. Shmuel travels to Beis Lechem. He doesn't right away advertise the full purpose of his visit. And uh, it says, The elders of the city were very fearful. The Redak says that they were fearful that maybe they did something wrong. The Yaimru Shalom. No, I come in peace. Lizbayach la Hashem bossi. I came to offer sacrifices to Hashem. His you sanctify yourselves of awesome and come and the also et come with me. Bezevach. So they chose a very great hall, and also, of course, the family of Yishai, which we already said they were from the Chashuvi year. Um, but Nitzavus didn't come; she was rejected. Yeah, so it says that Vayar Shmuel saw as Eliav. Eliav was the Bechor of, Shmu, uh, of uh, Yishai. And indeed, like his name implies, Eliav to me is, you know, to be the father. Rashi says he was Hogan Lamalchus, except for his attitude to David. Vayimer and uh, Shmuel said, Ah! Oh, Ach neged Hashem Meshichai. Must be that here we have the anointed one. Vayayma Hashem l'shmol. Hashem said to Shmuel, Al tabed el mareo, don't look at his appearance. Ve'al gova kamosai and his, uh, you know, prominent height. Ki ma'astiyah, I rejected him. Ki lo yasher yiru ha'odam. It's not the way people look. Ki odam yiru le'inayim. You only see what's before your eyes. Hashem yiru le'leiv av I see the heart. And his heart is not complete. So it says, Vayava Yishai Shiva Bonav Lefnei Shmuel. Yishai passed his seven children before Shmuel. 
Vayomer Shmuel, El Yishai, Shmuel said to Yishai, No, Leibachar Hashem Be'elet. None of the above. So Vayomer Shmuel, Yishai, Tamu, Anorim, are they no other children? Amal Yishai, Tamu. Because Yishai didn't think he had other children. He didn't think that David was his. Amal Shmuel, so Shmuel said to him, Puzzled. That Hashem, Amah, Hashem said, Lech veish lachach al Yishai beis alachmi. How could you say that Tamu? There must be somebody else. So Shmuel shrugged, you know. Amah loy reyesh katan, there is another child. He nehu royet sign, he's a shepherd. So Shmuel al Yishai shilcha, send for him, the kechenu, and bring him here. Kiloy never ad banupah, I'm not leaving until he comes. So they sent a shliach to summon David. David. David came, he went home, he changed his clothing. You don't go in front of the Navi except in Shabbos clothing. His mother asked him, why are you home from the field? You never come home during the day. So he told him that he's being summoned by the Navi. So Nitzavis says, if so, I'm coming as well. And she comes. When David comes in, nobody stands up. He's the rejected one. Nobody gives him and he noticed, and then Shmuel saw that he was Admaini, uh, that David had a very ruddy appearance, and Shmuel got ap- afraid. The Mephoshim say he got afraid that he looked like he was red, like Esau, and was worried he was a murderer. And suddenly Hashem tells him, Meshichi, I made. My anointed one is standing, Vata Yoshev, and you're sitting? Kum Mashcheu, get up, anoint him. Ki He's the king. So as soon as Shmuel heard that, Shmuel come, Benashik David, Shmuel got up, he kissed David. When Shmuel stands up, and he saw what's happening, the Yishai got up as well, and therefore the whole family and the whole town got, got up. And they started shouting, Yechia Melech, Yechia Melech, long live the king, long live the king. All of a sudden they hear huge crying. There were tears of joy as Nitzavis Basadol came out and told her husband the real story and revealed to her husband. And therefore, that's what we say in Hallel. David HaMelech says, Oidecha Hashem, I thank you Hashem, ki ani sani, you answered me. I wanted my name to be cleared, the name of Mami to be cleared. Vatili li and you are for me as a salvation. And, 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 Nitzeva said, Evan Moasu Aboinim, the stone that was rejected by the children, Haisal Reish Pina, became the cornerstone. And the brothers said in their defense, Meis Hashem Haisaz us, this was from Hashem, He Niflas Beinein, was hidden from our eyes. And all of Klal Yisrael said, Zayay Masa Hashem, on this day Hashem did, Nagila Venisme Chavai, is rejoicing and an exaltation for us. Now, let's study over here. Why didn't Nitzavis Basadol tell her husband right away what happened? They wanted to kill her as an adulteress, to clear her name. To clear David that he's not a mamzeris. She didn't want to embarrass her husband. That she knew that he was going to sleep with a shifra and not with her. They they, 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 They don't want to embarrass her. And, secondly, uh, even more so, uh, not even more, but also, she didn't want to turn in the shifcha. The shifcha revealed the secret, revealed in confidence, and she felt she had no right to do that against the shifcha. Um, Amazing thing, this Nitzavis Basadol. For 28 years, she lived spurned, not to embarrass her husband, who didn't sleep with her beforehand for three years. And that's, that's pshat batach balev baila. A husband could trust in a wife's loyalty. David HaMelech also didn't reveal what happened. And we, we also have to say, this wonder is Shifcha. We don't even know her name.
But Malchus based David came about because this Shifra, she could have taken Yishai, how exciting it was. She could have gotten her conditional freedom and slept with the great Yishai. But she showed her loyalty, and from that loyalty came Malchus based David. Now all of this was done again as a fourth stage in the building of Malchus based David. All of this was done to uh, save from the prosecution of the Satan. You should know that, you know, when we do Vidu, the Nusach Svar does Vidu after Shemayin Esrei, the Zayar tells us that the confession of the sins that we make is the gift that goes to the Satan so that the Satan shouldn't prosecute. And the Vidu Yana Karban is the same way. Rebel Yalapyan says, if the sun comes to you while you're learning and says, okay, it's enough, get up, relax. So you shouldn't say no, but you should say soon. Don't go up against the sun. This also explains that, what do we say? Tell him, Ani Avducha ben Amosecha, Pitachta Lemoiseirai. Now, Rav Avigdor Miller, Zech Tzavikosh Baruch Hashusi Yogen Aleinu, he says that we see that Dovin Amelech, even though he had a father that never sinned and had six hundred thousand Talmidim, he gives his reason for being an Eved Hashem to his mother. And Rav Avigdor Miller always quotes this as the importance of the tutelage of the mother. The altito ishtere But we see over here another thing. Dovra Melech said, Ani abducha ben amosecha. People said I was only the son of your, mo your mother. They, they, they thought I wasn't the son of my father. They thought I was a mamza. Pitach tolomoisiera, you opened up my chains and revealed the secrets. I also think that this could be uh, what it what it means? Shila Malach says, "I ain't I Elohim." David Malach says, "I lift my eyes to the mountains. May I in Yovay Ezri? From where will come my help?" Horim also means Horim. I lift my eyes to my parents. May I in Yovay Ezri? It's not coming from my father. He doesn't know the truth of what happened. It's not coming from my mother because she's protecting my father's. Uh, embarrassment. Ah, Ezri me'am Hashem. My help will come from Hashem. Oise Shemayim Vah, it's just like he made he heaven and earth. Yesh me'ayin, something from nothing. Shmuel HaMelech will come and appoint me as king and I will become something from nothing. I will become a king from a mamzer. Perhaps, just like Yishai is a palindrome, David also is a palindrome. And perhaps David is a palindrome because, it, again, Kala Oime David Chato, whoever says that David sinned with the sin of Bathsheba, the Gemara says, Eina Elatoya. So David Amel was also pure like his father. Now we might wonder about something looking at this story. And wonder after the first time, when the Shifcha didn't become pregnant, why, why wasn't Yishai with her again? Why didn't Yishai approach the Shifcha again? It could be that Yishai felt if Hashem liked this arrangement, she would have gotten pregnant right away. And because it, she didn't, Yishai didn't do it a second time. It could also be that when Nitzavis became pregnant, Yishai viewed it as a punishment for what he did, and he desisted from doing it. I also want to point out that David HaMelech was using the years of Adam. Right? We said he had took 70 years from Adam. And it's interesting that Adam separated from his wife for 130 years after the sin. And David HaMelech would cause that for 30 years, for 28 years, 
Yishai and Itzevis would be, you know, rejected one from the other because he thought that she did an iser. Also want to point out the remarkable name Nitzavis Bas Adoel. Remarkable name Nitzavis Bas Adoel. Nitzavis, she stood. For 28 years she stood in her strength and even though she was spurned, she didn't reveal the truth until Aid El, until Hashem gave testimony, right? And Hashem brought the Navi Shmuel and said that Neged Hashem Meshichai, that he's the king, and revealed his secret. And it could be Nitzavis is from the Lashon of Emes Vyatsev, that the truth was finally proven and she was finally vindicated. These miraculous events, you know, also showed finally for sure that the din of Mo'avi uh, Velo Ma'avis is the true halacha. On, 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 on Shavuos, which people say, oh, it's a man's Yom Tov, it's all about learning Torah. You see, we give so much providence prominence to women, whether it's Rus, and now also the saintly great Nitzavis Basadol. They should be Melitza Yoisha for Klal Yisrael. I want to thank you for joining us. Wish you a healthy Shabbos and a healthy Yom Tov.